Okay, welcome to those who are worshiping with us here today, to those of you who are watching on the live stream, and to those who will be watching the DVD later. Um, first of all, one important announcement is there is a birthday today, and that'd be Rick Heimer. So we wish Rick a happy birthday. <laughs> he doesn't like the recognition, but oh well. <laughs> Um, as far as announcements, you will notice that we have no slides today and uh, we're looking for volunteers to run the slideshow because no clicker, no slides. So there is a sign-up sheet in the Narthex, so please consider taking a turn. Um, thank you to Kathy Pospisil who is so dedicated every Sunday to run them, but she needs a Sunday off once in a while too. So hopefully we can get a couple people who can probably um, consider helping out. So, Other announcements in the bulletin. The VBS will be held August 8th to the 12th. You can register online or can find the registration form and more info in the July Bridge. They're looking for volunteers to help coordinate or teach the 4K class. So let the office know if you're interested. Um, the online form can be found on the church's website. Also, if you have any favorite hymns to sing, um, let me know or let Noel know, and we'll include them in the upcoming worship services. Um, that kind of leads us into our worship for today. And I want to thank Pastor Bethany for sharing this service with us. Um, she's used it in the past, and so we're going to do it again today here. Um, and it's called The Story Behind the Song. So for each hymn, we will read a related scripture and then the background of the song, and then we'll sing the hymn. And thank you to those who are reading today, too. Um, sometimes a hymn can move a person, and it's what we take with us after the church service. So maybe knowing how a song originated, just having a little background um, can give us a new understanding. And, when we sing it, and even if we're not singing it, just listening and, and uh, hearing the words and how God is speaking to us through the words and the music. So we begin worship with our gathering hymn, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. And this is the 4th of July weekend, so I added this hymn to the service. And just a little background on this song, it was written in 1893 by Catherine Bates after the summer session at Colorado College where she was lecturing. And on the trip to Colorado College, she had stopped at the Columbian World Expo in Chicago where the White City Exhibition was the source for the words Alabaster Cities in the last stanza. And then at the end of this session, she and other teachers from Eastern schools took a trip to Pikes Peak. And it was then and there, she says, looking out over the sea-like expanse of fertile country spreading away so far under those ample skies that the opening line of the hymn floated into my mind. She penciled four stanzas into her notebook when she left Colorado Springs, copied them out two years later, and then sent them to the Congregationalist, where they were published on July 4, 1895. She made a revised version that was printed in the Boston Evening Transcript on November 10, 1904. Further revisions were included in 1918. And then the ELW, the, the Cranberry Hymnal that we have, um, and the United Methodist Hymnal both omit stanza two, which can read as white manifest destiny against Native Americans. So that's why we only have three stanzas of the four that she wrote in our hymnal. So please rise as you're able as we sing O Beautiful for Spacious Skies, hymn number 888.
our first hymn this morning you is. Be seated. Oh, you may be seated. I'm sorry. <laughs> our first hymn this morning is Born in Cry. Reading from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know them very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. The composition of Borning Cry began in 1985 when John Ilvesacker was asked to prepare a series on baptism called Reflections for the ALC. His website states, John began work on the song before any footage for the video had been shot. When the media team met to put the music with the video for the first time, it became obvious that the dance-like beat and fast rhythm of the music did not match the gentle scenes being depicted on the screen. The lyrics were on target, but the music, but not the music. As he left the studio that day, John received the suggestion to take it home and personalize it. As a result, the composer adapted a completed work into a new form, the result of which was one of the most which was one of the most popular hymns written in the late 20th century. Let us sing Borning Cry, hymn number 732. <clears throat>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who comforts us. With your spirit accompany us on our life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The next hymn is Amazing Grace. John Newton based his hymn Amazing Grace on this passage in 1 Chronicles 17. King David's Prayer. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And even this was a small thing in your sight, O God. You have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. You regard me as someone of high rank, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you for honoring your servant? You know your servant. For your servant's sake, O Lord, and according to your own heart, you have done all these great deeds, making known all these great things. Written almost two and a half centuries ago in 1772, the words for the beloved song were born from the heart, mind, and experiences of the Englishman John Newton. Knowing the story of John Newton's life as a slave trader and the journey he went through before writing the hymn will help to understand the depth of his words and his gratefulness for God's truly amazing grace. Having lived through a rather unfortunate and troubled childhood, his mother passed away when he was just six years old. Newton spent years fighting against authority, going so far as trying to desert the Royal Navy in his 20s. Later abandoned by his crew in West Africa, he was forced to be a servant to a slave trader, but was eventually rescued. On the return voyage to England, a violent storm hit and almost sank the ship prompting Newton to begin his spiritual conversion as he cried out to God to save them from the storm. Upon his return, however, Newton became a slave ship master, a profession in which he served for several years, bringing slaves from Africa to England over multiple trips. He admitted to sometimes treating the slaves abhorrently in 1754, after becoming violently ill on a sea voyage, Newton abandoned his life as a slave trader, the slave trade, and seafaring altogether, wholeheartedly devoting his life to God's service. He was ordained as an Anglican priest in 1764 and became quite popular as a preacher and hymn writer, penning some 280 hymns. Among them, the great Amazing Grace, which first appeared in the Olney hymns printed by Newton and poet fellow writer William Cowper. It was later set to the popular tune New Britain in 1835 by William Walker. In later years, Newton fought alongside William Wilberforce, leader of the parliamentary campaign to abolish the African slave trade. He described the horrors of the slave trade in a tract he wrote, supporting the campaign and lived to see the British passage of the Slave Trade Act in 1807. And now we see how lyrics like, I once was lost but now I'm found, was blind but now I see, and through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come, tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home carrying a much deeper meaning than, in a, than a sinner's mere gratitude. Close to death at various times and blind to reality at others, Newton would most assuredly not have written Amazing Grace if not for his tumultuous past. And many of us would then be without these lovely words 
so that so aptly describe our own relationship with Christ and our reliance on God's grace in our lives. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. So let us sing Amazing Grace, hymn number 779. Our next hymn is Children of the Heavenly Father. Carolina Lina Sandel was born in 1832 Sweden. Her father was a Lutheran pastor who raised Lina in a faith that emphasized the grace and warmth of God. At the same time, she received an excellent liberal arts education from her father and brother-in-law, learning to read and write in Swedish, Norwegian, French, German, and English. Throughout her life, she wrote over 2,000 hymn texts and poems. Her most popular hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father, was written when she was only 17 years old. She wrote it while seated on the branch of a large ash tree that stood in the parsonage yard. From that spot, on a warm summer evening, she could listen to the content twitter of the birds as they hid in their nests among the green leaves. And from there, she could watch the stars as they began to appear. Her impressions fortified the biblical concepts of the security of God's children. The song builds toward verses based on Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
a God who will never forsake God's children, from Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and bold, have no fear or dread of them, because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Let us sing, Children of the Heavenly Father, hymn number 781. is shine Jesus shine again Jesus spoke to them saying I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life John chapter 8 verse 12 Graham Kendrick is from England the son of a Baptist pastor and he began writing songs in the early 1970s shine Jesus shine has become a song of hope Graham Kendrick said Bearing in mind the worldwide popularity of this song, perhaps the most surprising thing about the writing of it is the ordinariness of the circumstances. I had been thinking for some time about the holiness of God and how that as a community of believers and as individuals, his desire is for us to live continually in his presence. So I wrote the three verses and road tested it in my home church. Though there was clearly merit to the song, it seemed incomplete. So as I was unable at the time to take it any further, I put it back in the file. Several months later, I was asked to submit new songs for a conference songbook, and I was reviewing this three-verse song, I realized that it needed a chorus. I remember standing in my music room with guitar slung around my neck, trying different approaches. The line, Shine Jesus Shine, came to mind, and within about half an hour, I finished the chorus. So let us sing, Shine Jesus Shine, hymn number 671.
continue with the Apostles' Creed, please rise as you are able. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. <laughs> And then we will uh, receive our offering. Our next hymn is for the beauty of the earth. Hebrews 13, 8 and 15. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then let us continually offer a sacrifice to praise God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Foliot Sanford Pierpont, 1835 to 1917, was 29 years old when he returned to the city of his birth, Bath, England. The beauty of the countryside in the late spring inspired him to write the words to the hymn for the beauty of the earth. Pierpont included thanks for God's creation social blessings, and also thank God for his spiritual blessings. This hymn was originally written for the communion service. Each stanza concluded with the words, Christ our God, to thee we raise, this our sacrifice of praise, alluding to Hebrews 13, 15. Let us sing for the beauty of the earth, hymn 879.
We receive our offering prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Lord of the harvest, you send your church into the world to proclaim God's new creation to all. Renew the church as it carries out your mission of peace and healing. We pray for missionaries who accompany your people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation abounds with flowing waters and diverse creatures. Guide the work of climate scientists as they develop and advocate ways to restore Earth's natural balance. Motivate humankind to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the Earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. You guard the nations. Let no leaders exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable and work for the good of all. Send your spirit to eradicate classism and inequity, violence and war, poverty and hunger. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire abundant life for all. As we celebrate Independence Day, instill in us gratitude, generosity, and persistence in working toward freedom for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Mothering God, you care for all people in need. Nourish those who are hungry. Restore employment to those who have lost work. Heal those who are sick and comfort all who are dying or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We remember the saints who proclaimed your reign on earth and now rest in you, especially Thomas the Apostle, whom we remember today. Make us faithful in our witness to Christ's new creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our last hymn is Go, My Children, With My Blessing. In 1983, the Lutheran hymnist Jaroslav Vajda wrote the hymn as a kind of benediction based on Numbers 6, 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. It can currently be found in print in 17 hymnals across denominations. Vajda writes, I place the words of the hymn into the mouth of the blessing triune God, dismissing the congregation after worship while drawing together a review of the events that transpired during the service. Forgiveness hearing the gospel, sharing the sacrament. We go our way singing, Go My Children With My Blessing, hymn number 543. <clears throat>